Hello and welcome to another Advanced Skeleton video. This time we're going to have a closer look at Gimbal Lock. Now Gimbal Lock is an interesting phenomenon that can be sometimes hard to understand how it affects animation. Now to help make it more clear, there's something in Advanced Skeleton called Gimbal Lock Visualizers. Let's just run it and see what happens. There's this gizmos showing up everywhere and it's a bit too much at this point, so we'll go back, hit it one more time, that removes him. Now this time we're going to select the single controller before we create the Gimbal Lock Visualizer. Rotations. One might think that they're very straightforward and that any given object can be freely rotated in any direction at any time. Now the catch is, because we're doing animation, we have to describe how we got to this new rotation. And we do so by saving keys. So let's give that a try. We'll go back to zero. And we'll set some keys at frame one. Now jump over to frame 10. And we'll apply the rotations. So let's say we want to get to a pose something like this. The arrow's pointing straight up towards us here and about 45 degrees twisted down. Okay, we'll try that. We'll go to frame 10. And we'll apply about 45 degrees to the side. It's about 45 degrees up and about 45 degrees off twist. Okay, now this time I'm going to try to apply the same in a different order. So it was about 45 degrees of twist and there was about 45 degrees to the side and there was about 45 degrees up. So you can see we actually have quite a different result just by changing the order for which we apply the tree rotation. So we can clearly see that the order is important. Now we can tell Maya which order we want it to read it in. And that's this fellow in the attribute editor, rotation order. And we'll see for every different rotation order, we are getting different results. Next, let's see what's the lock part about the gimbal lock. And for this, we're gonna switch the option in the rotation tool. By default, the rotation tool is in a mode called local rotation mode. Now to have a closer look at the gimbal lock, let's switch over to gimbal mode. In this mode, what you see is more accurately representing your rotation values. But as we'll see here, what can happen is one of your axes can start lining up with one of your other axes. Here, I'm applying Rotate Y, and as you can see, the Rotate X axis is starting to align with the Rotate C. And as these two are fully aligned, we're in complete gimbal lock we have lost a axis of rotation, so to speak. There are no longer any rotational values representing this rotation. What used to be the X rotation is here completely gone because the X rotation is now doing the exact same as the Z rotation. So, couldn't we just change the rotation order to fix this problem? Uh, no. You cannot eliminate the gimbal lock, but you can choose which axis is going to have this issue by changing the rotation order. So now let's bring back the rest of the gimbal lock visualizer. And now I'll tell you what this is showing us. When the yellow arrow gets in the green cone, you're going to lose the red axis. Now I'll select the controller and in the attribute editor to change the rotation order and we can see how it affects the gimbal lock. So, which rotation order should one choose? Well, if you're using any of these advanced skeleton templates, they already have well-considered rotation orders, but you might have hand-built your own creature using the limbs, and you might therefore need to think about what's going to be your best rotation order. Now, there's not one simple answer, a rotation order that will always going to work best. It depends on your limb, as various parts of the body rotates in different directions. So let's have a look at some of the body parts. Now, here's the elbow. And for this guy, it's only got one degree of freedom. So basically, we just want to make sure that gimbal lock is not going to appear on your freedom to rotate axis. Now, if we go down to the wrist, now it gets a bit trickier. It's, this is a three degrees of freedom limb. And as you see from the gimbal lock visualizer, we're going to lose this rotation when the yellow arrow approaches the green cone. Which is not a bad option to have set for the wrist, as the wrist has the least degree of freedom in this axis. Now, if we were to look at one of the IK controllers, 
we'll see something a little bit different. The yellow arrow is no longer pointing down the bow. This is because all advanced Galen IK controllers are oriented in the world space orientation, which is quite handy for animation purpose and it means that translate Y is always gonna mean straight up in the scene and those translation animation curves for IK control is gonna get more manageable. And this is while the yellow arrow is pointing directly down the scene X axis. And the gimbal lock for this controller, you'll see we're gonna roost this axis once the yellow arrow is in the green cone. So just a quick recap, gimbal lock visualizers are created for every control unless one is selected. In the rigging process, you can use this to visualize what's gonna be the optimal rotation order for any given control. Once you're done with them, you can just delete them through here. That's it for this time. I hope this video has somewhat clarified gimbal look and I'll see you in the next video.